Hello everyone, my name is Legend Ronnie and this game is Rise of Kingdoms and we have again Theodora and YSS we're gonna clarify their skills because when I've done the review if you haven't seen it I'm gonna post a card on the top or at the end of the video it wasn't very very clear what their skills are actually doing so on the paper they were actually looking so great so definitely I wanted to ask questions so I got the answer. So in this video I'm just gonna clarify their skills for everyone so you can actually understand what their skills do. I'm going to start with Theodora and at the end of the video I'm gonna update my review regarding Theodora and YSS but let's first start with the skills and let's see what they are actually doing so it's more understandable for everyone. The first skill that's nothing to ask is just a simple circular AoE damage and it's also being reduced for each additional target that it hits. But then it comes the Keepers of Secrets. When commanding the garrison, all troops under Theodora's command gain up to 10% defense and damage taken from rallied armies is reduced by up to 10%. Well, this was a huge confusion for many of us, and the reason was probably a huge confusion for many of us. I'm going to take Attila and Takeda for example. If we go on, on to Attila and Takeda, when we check the description, for example, I'm taking his second skill, increase all damage. So whenever there was all damage situation, they specified. Then we go to the fourth skill, and it's again troops all damage dealt. Then we go to his expertise and it says increase damage dealt. So they pretty much wherever we had an all damage situation, they were writing it. But now I ask and on Theodora's second skill, when it says here damage from rallied enemy reduction, it's all damage. So it's not just damage or normal attack damage or probably just normal attack and counter attack. It's all damage that also includes skill damage, which kind of changes things a little bit around. So this thing now is clarified because it's quite a huge change reducing all damage. All troops under Tertara's command gain 10% attack. This is permanent because I also ask if the 10% attack is permanent. Yes, this is a permanent bonus. And when Theodora's army is more than 50% trained, her troops deal extra 2% damage. This damage is all damage again. So in a garrisoning situation for a very long time, you quite have an advantage using Theodora, you start dealing all damage. So you'll have more skill damage, you'll have more normal attack, you'll, you'll have more counter attack damage bonus because you do counter attack uh, damage as well, while you take all damage less. This is quite changes a little bit how Theodora works. Then we go to the four skill which when commanding the garrison each time Theodora troops take damage, uh, they have a 10% chance to gain 40% damage bonus. Well, again, damage bonus, right? Who would have actually think that this is anything else than just normal attack damage? But no, this is all damage again. So I ask this question, the royal powers, damage bonus is what kind? The answer was the damage is all damages. And that's pretty significant because that's skill damage. So if we use two skill damaging commanders in the garrison, when this goes on, it's quite some damage boost. You already have uh, another 10% if the march in the garrison is still over 50% strength. With another 40%, that could be quite some damage. And I'm not talking just necessary skill damage, but normal attack damage, counter attack damage, and all these kind of damages kind of changes Theodora. It's just making her way more powerful in Garrison than we actually thought on the first review. Then here is the cherry on top of the cake is her expertise. Immediately removes any slow and control effects from Theodora's troops. Okay, now when you think about control effects, you're probably just thinking about slow, Mars speed reduction. It's, I said in the review as well, this will be very interesting if it reduces skills like Fears of the Fire or this is from Takeda, which is a huge blow, by the way, if you can remove Fears of the Fire and it, it does. So Theodora's expertise, once you expertise Theodora, it removes any kind of control effect. So everything that is either damage reduction, anything that is all kind of debuffs Tomiris, including Tomiris. I asked all these questions. Uh, Arrow of Iron, it does remove it. 
from Attila and Takeda, as Attila and Takeda also has a chance to reduce enemy attack by 50%. It does remove it as well. Fears of the Fire, like I said, from Takeda, it it is a big blow for Attila and Takeda to remove Fears of the Fire because it literally negates uh, Takeda's expertise. Because it does 30% normal attack damage to enemies who have been debuffed by Fears of the Fire, making Takeda looking not very great against them. Then it also removes Tomiri's debuff, the poison. So even if you, let's say, try to stack the poison so you can actually do some skill damage it just removes them because that's the reason you use Tomiris to just cause more skill damage which kind of brings Theodora to be a little bit OP in Garrison because that was my concern and that's for the reason I asked the questions why would they actually create commanders that are not looking very good on paper why would they create commanders just to put them there it doesn't make any sense so I had to ask the questions. Now, after I got the answers, I do have to say that in Garrison, but literally in Garrison, Theodora is going to be OP. The reason I'm saying just in Garrison, because it has two skills that are super tied to Garrison. The other skills uh, for field battles, let's say, is not enough to actually be worth it to be used on field battle or to actually just expertise her for the field battles. Maybe the defense talent tree can give you a little bit of um, survi survival, on the field battles but it's just not enough as it is right now for garrison situation she's op now let's go to the other commander why it says because i had questions for him as well so on the first skill it says direct damage factor field battles i asked if it's rallies included and yes it's rallies included as well so even if you launch rally you still benefit from the 2000 damage factor the second skill it says over here all damage when this commander is fighting so I also asked the question, but it's all damage and defense bonus. Then we go to the third skill, because my concern about this, this third skill, which I didn't notice in the review, is the defense bonus, if this is permanent. And the defense bonus, this is a permanent buff, you have it all the time, but then increase troops damage by up to 20% when the commander drops below 50%. Now again, the first thought when I've done the review is just damage bonus, you just expect normal attack damage, which we all know doesn't have such a huge impact, but it's actually all damage. So when your troops drop below 50%, it actually increase all damage bonus by 20%, which is huge. Now the reason I'm saying this is huge, because again, I'm going to bring another commander to actually prove that these two commanders were actually brought up just to be a hard counter for Attila Takeda. We go to Attila's expertise, which I already showed it, against enemy troops with less than 50% strength, strength, increase damage dealt by 20%. Again, this can also be all damage. I didn't ask this question, but it says just damage dealt. This is a high chance that it can be all damage, but it simply get leveled up by YSS third skill. So when the troops drop below, even then Attila Takeda does more damage, YSS also does more damage. So as long as the garrison is, is being topped up, Attila and Takeda will still not have any kind of advantages over the garrison. Again, all damage. That kind of changes things a little bit because these two commanders do skill damage as well. So the amount of all damage that is actually being increased by all these two commanders, if the things line up, because it is a chance. So the second skill has a chance the four skill from Theodora also have a chance. All these things to actually go on the right position when you actually do skill damage, it's a very rare chance. But still, all damage is the rest of the damages as well. And they kind of pile up at some point and they do some significant damage. Then we have the four skill, which I said that this guy might actually have a utility for field battles. Now on the four skill, it is a glitch over here. It wasn't supposed to be a period because this is what actually uh, gave us the impression that this is just like a half and a half skill meaning that the attack is garrison specific and the shield and the counter-attack damage bonus can also work on the field battles so the whole skill is only for garrison that was the answer that i received meaning that 
doesn't really has much utilities for field battles his expertise is kind of mix of troops type of expertise so if you actually use him for field battles the only thing you would benefit from why it says is the 30 percent defense bonus and a 2000 new on a single target which personally i would say that it's way too low to worth it to invest on a commander just to keep him for field battles now that the skills are actually being clarified i do have to say that this two commanders will definitely be op in garrison for field battles they will definitely not gonna work maybe a little bit theodora might just work because she does aoe she has a circular area 1700 and you can also benefit from co ruler uh, while the troops is over 50 percent strength you have some attack bonus some all damage bonus so i, I could say that Theodora might just have a little bit of utility, especially on group battles. You put her second to a defensive commander, it might just actually work. Let's say you can even do like Guan Yu and Theodora. Shouldn't be actually that, that wrong to actually just have more AoE damage on the murder balls. It needs to be tested. But personally, considering that both of the commanders have at least two skills that are kind of tied up to garrison, I would say that these two commanders, they are garrison specific. They are made for garrison. My advice still hasn't changed about not wanting to work on them. The reason I'm saying that, and it might be surprising, is let's face it, how many players are actually on a garrison situation? On a kingdom, 10 15 players let's say even 20 players but how many will actually garrison flags how many will actually garrison passes how many will actually garrison fortresses it's quite a small amount of players that actually do that now the other thing that went into my mind now that these commanders actually have such a uh, lot of all damage and all this kind of bonuses and being op in garrison i would say that they will have a huge role and impact in arc of osiris but it's again brings us to the same question how many players are actually on a garrisoning situation so there's quite literally a small amount of players from each kingdom that are actually in a garrison situation meaning that probably 97 percent of the players is not going to work working on these two commanders so my answer still stays the same as the review is not worth it investing on them because they are literally garrisoning specific so if you're actually a garrisoning commander or a garrisoning player in your, your kingdom then you should definitely work on them if you know you're, you're defending flags you're very active or in arc of osiris these two commanders will definitely change the things a little bit around it was quite a question mark for me introducing commanders that actually not worth the investment but they are actually worth the investments and they are quite op but just in garrison so in any kind of garrisoning situation mix of troops and it kind of hurts me to say it but it might just be op even with siege only considering all the bonuses and all the damage bonuses that they actually have together they might be op using just siege because we are already having commanders that we are using with just siege and we are having decent results but when you put these two commanders with just siege it it might just be some some crazy results i mean you might just demolish a delay takeda with these two commanders and siege so might just be a <laughs> era ending of a Tla takeda once these two commanders will start to become popular in kvk's probably kvk 5 or 6 or something like that a Tla takeda era might just drop down for rallying and probably will have to do something else so I hope this actually gave you the answers that you are looking for about these two new commanders. And until next time, this is your boy Legeroni signing off. Peace out, yo, and take care. See you on the next one.